Welcome to not just the theory, but a lame theory. In this video, I'll be discussing the lame theory that Frisk is actually dead in Undertale. Here to help me is some guy I found on the street. Let's begin, yeah? In the beginning of the game, you see Frisk plummet into a hole landing on a pad of flowers. The thought here is that this is the moment Frisk dies. Falling that height from a hole onto flowers will kill a human being. A pad of flowers may be able to protect you from a fall, but from the height of the top of the hole to the point of impact, you'd be splatted flat. Like I said earlier, this is the moment Frisk dies and the game begins. Unbeknownst to Frisk, he's dead this point on. The shock from this death was so sudden, it resulted in this dreamlike world that eventually would become the game. So when are you gonna pay me? Eh, you know what the thing is done or something, don't interrupt me. Anyways, for a kid roaming the mountain looking for this hole, it could be said Frisk is running from reality or escapism. This plays into what the world becomes, a longing for a family and great friends. This idea is what plays into this dream world. His biggest wish became what he wanted on death. Some of you may be wondering, then what about Karen Sands? Well, hold your wieners, I'm getting there. You see, Sands in this world acts as an angel figure, judging Frisk based on his mind, if he's more fit for heaven or hell. Going to the surface is essentially Frisk going to heaven. Frisk becoming Kara is him being sent to hell to suffer. This is all based on his actions in this world alone. Aren't you just pulling shit out of your ass? Sir, this is a family-friendly theory. Also, no, this is based on the very clear evidence provided by the game. The only clear thing is that you're crazy. Say more of that and kiss your pay goodbye. Say you take the genocide path. Those actions, Sans will judge you unfit to join heaven and thus send to hell. Though if your actions are those of forgiveness, love, and compassion, like on the pacifist route, Sans will grant Frisk access to heaven. Of course, all the characters are byproducts of his own mind's creation, excluding Sans, who has a deeper purpose. Wait, how can Sans not be part of his own mind if this is a dream world considering he's dead? Listen here, you little shit. I'm making the theory, not you, okay? Now, Flowey takes on the role of the devil on the shoulder, trying to lead you down the bad path. Similar to how Sans is the angel that judges you, Flowey is a guide, but not a helpful or benevolent one. You also have to think about these monsters want his soul. Well, some do. That's because his soul is all that's left after his death falling from the hull. It's his soul that is alive, not Frisk. Hard to grasp? Well, look at it this way. Asgore wants his soul to open the gate to the human world. Who's to say Asgore isn't the personification of God, taking his soul to heaven? That's why Asgore tells Frisk not to give up, so his soul can finally rest in peace as it makes its journey through this dreamlike world. And that's the end of this theory. Be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. And remember, it's not just a theory, but a lame theory. See you next time.